Do you love the Race 3D Pro 2? Do you like the features of the E2, but its build volume is just a little bit too small? Are you looking for your first high-end 3D printer? Are you just shopping around? Or are you an enthusiast looking for news? Well, have I got something for you. It is time to present the Race 3D Pro 3 series. This right here is an alpha test machine, so there will still be some tweaks made before it goes into series production, but it offers us many glimpses into the changes made and the new features available. It really is a beautiful machine, solidly built, and a powerful way to print perfect parts pretty much out of the box. It essentially combines the best of the Pro 2 and the E2, and then features a redesigned printhead. And it seems it's not just me that loves what they have done. So far, I have gotten extremely positive feedback across the board from multiple sources on the improvements Race 3D have made for their new flagship machine. The Pro 3 uses the same solid frame as the Pro 2, giving it a lot of rigidity and allowing it to sit perfectly on the Pro 2 printer cart. Just in case you haven't seen one of these yet, they're quite handy for storing the tools needed for daily use and maintenance. There's also room for filaments down below. That way, you maybe won't be searching for your side cutter every time you want to load a filament. It does mean the machine is quite heavy, but with this size, it's not something you would just pick up and carry around by yourself anyway. The axes are the same as well, keeping to the high reliability and accuracy that users of the Pro 2 series are used to. The Pro 3 comes either in this small version with a single extrusion build volume of 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters and a dual extrusion build volume of 255 by 300 by 300 millimeters, or as a plus version with a build volume of 300 by 300 by 605 in single or 255 by 300 by 605 millimeters in dual extrusion val uh, volume. This is a bit less than on the Pro 2 due to the completely redesigned printhead. The Pro 3 series now features a flexible steel plate with build tack rather than the solid aluminium plate the Pro 2 used. This is particularly great to easily remove large prints with almost no effort at all. The build tack surface is itself is good for a multitude of prints before needing to be replaced. The replacement itself is fairly inexpensive and easy to do. Of course, the Pro 3 still uses IdeaMaker as its slicing software, and it seamlessly integrates with the existing Raise Clouds ecosystem. So you can easily integrate it into your printer network, monitoring and controlling all of your print jobs via the app or the web interface. This will provide you with statistics and real-time camera feeds of your printer. A huge update to the Pro 3 is the mesh leveling with flatness detection and the auto bed leveling before each print. It is the tried and true system you may already know from the Race 3D E2 printers. Whereas previously on the Pro 2, bed leveling was an arduous process and Z-axis calibration was painfully sl slow, requiring homing and re-homing the Z-axis many, many times, the easy and quick process with a probe attached to the printhead can save tons of time and frustration. Personally, every time I now have to go use a Pro 2 printer and need to calibrate its Z offset, I whine about how the Pro 3 version is just so much nicer to use. The printhead has been completely redesigned, reducing its weight by more than 150 grams. At the same time, its center of gravity has been improved and the cable chain replaced with a flat ribbon cable. With these changes, the dimensional accuracy has been substantially improved and issues such as ghosting should occur even less often. Something that isn't immediately visible is that the access to the filament feeding channel has become much easier, allowing for a better cleaning experience when filament does become stuck. The filament runout sensors now sit at the tube fitting on the side of the machine, further simplifying the printed design. A major change moving to the Pro 3 series is the introduction of swappable print cores. No longer is changing from one nozzle to another a difficult process involving tools and time, but now it is as easy as unclipping the old print core and inserting a new one. This is a massive improvement for anyone that wants to use different nozzle diameters frequently, uh, wants to change between brass and hardened steel or even ruby nozzles, or just doesn't want to wait as long when a nozzle got clogged or worn out. 
simply take out the problematic print core, replace it with a fresh one, and off you go again. Then clean and replace the nozzle on the old print core. Unlike with the Ultimaker print cores, the nozzle on these is replaceable if it is damaged, allowing for longer use of the rest of the print core and less waste. My biggest question will be how Waste 3D price them. If they are prohibitively expensive, my, it will severely limit my excitement for these. But if they are affordable and you can keep two spare ones on hand, this could be a significant game changer for machine uptime and to reduce time spent doing maintenance. While on the topic of the printhead, there are now color changing LEDs at the front to indicate when the printhead is cool, when it is heating, and when it is actively printing. This is also a nice change as visual indicators are just always cool and it's easy to see the machine status at just a glance. Next up is the airflow manager. It's a big black thing on the back of the printer. The Pro 2 featured a HEPA filter but no additional circulation. That means when printing PLA, you would have to take the top cover off. This beast at the back of the machine now circulates air around inside the chamber when turned on, keeping a more or less constant temperature throughout the inside of the build volume. It is a bit loud, but it does the job. No longer is it necessary to remove the top cover when printing PLA, as long as you keep the airflow manager turned on. Now, the airflow manager is specifically designed to cool the build volume a little bit. In my opinion, it would have actually been more useful to have a heating function for the entire build volume, especially above the built plate, when printing something like ABS, for example, where warping is a significant risk. Alas, for now, we just cool down the build volume by about 6 to 8 degrees Celsius, allowing for better printing of PLA. Another novelty is the intelligent EVE assistant. It's not really AI, it seems more like a procedural algorithm attempting to provide assistance. She prompts you to do maintenance after a certain number of working hours, asks what went wrong whenever you cancel a print, and guides you to the correct calibration menu or troubleshooting depending on your responses. This is obviously just the beginning of her abilities, and I'm sure Waste3D will invest resources continuously to improve on this already useful feature. So just to quickly summarize, the major changes are the complete printhead redesign with the print cores, weight savings, and LEDs. The auto bed leveling and the flexible steel build plate make your life a lot easier. Then there's the airflow manager, and last but not least, the EVE assistant. There are also some minor changes that I haven't covered yet. For example, there are now sensors in the door and the top cover, allowing the printer to have an auto pause mode when either one is opened. This is particularly great for uh, schools. Also, as I said, we have slight uh, changes in the build volume and a slight change in the overall machine dimension due to the new airflow manager. It is important to note that the Pro 2 will still be sold going forward. The Pro 3 is not supposed to totally replace it, but rather supplement Race 3D's portfolio. The Pro 3 will be more expensive than the Pro 2 due to all the added features packed into it and to offset it from the still present Pro 2. I would say the added cost is justified by all the added value. However, if you already have a Pro 2, are happy with it, and don't really feel like you need any of these new features, by all means, stick with the Pro 2. But if you are just looking for your first high-end 3D printer, looking to buy a new machine and test it, or are interested in the exchangeable hot ends, the auto bed leveling, the flexible build plate, the auto pause mode of your school, then the Pro 3 is a very, very interesting machine. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I answered any questions you may have had. If you do have any further questions or comments, please leave them below the video. Consider subscribing for more content like this one surrounding 3D printers, 3D scanners, and another video that I have in the works where I compare the Race 3D uh, Pro 3 to an Ultimaker S5. So stay tuned, have a great day, and I'll hopefully see you next time.